Hello and shalom and greetings to my brothers and sisters and Master Yeshua the Messiah who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Brother Nick here and today is the 29th day of the sixth month on Yahweh Elohim's solar calendar, the restored solar calendar of the Israelites, of the Torah and the prophets, of the book of Jubilees, of the book of Enoch, of the Dead Sea Scrolls, the Zadok priestly calendar, the calendar found at Qumran. The Gregorian equivalent is September 16th, 2022, and I am on the Dead Sea here in Jordan. I am in the former land of Reuben. I say former land of Reuben because in the Messianic reign found in Ezekiel chapter like 47 or 48, it doesn't appear that this side of the sea and this area is going to be part of the land of the inheritance of the Israelites. This video is called World War Three, Yom Tura to Yom Kippur, the days of awe, and the first rapture escape and tribulation, possibly. As some of you might know, we are currently in World War Three, says the evil idolater Pope. And here is a article that I have to share that with you. And this article is from September 9th, 2022, so about a week ago from the New York Post. And in this article, it says Pope Francis repeats warning of, quote, Third World War. And a couple of things I highlighted here. The pontiff reiterated a claim he first presented one week ago during a general audience that the earth is already enraptured in a piecemeal World War III. So he's saying that a piecemeal, a type of World War III, is already going on. Enraptured is caught up. The world is caught up in this war. And he, again, in this article, says that he repeated this observation or his opinion he made on, on, on Thursday. And what's interesting is he talks about the, uh, uh, the gravity of this war and the violation of the international law and how this risks nuclear escalation nuclear escalation and the grave economic and social consequences so you see that right here that the pope is saying world war three is going on it's piecemeal but it's going on and the world is caught up it's ensnared it's actually enraptured it's ensnared it's caught into this thing and there's risks of nuclear escalation and then also grave economic and social consequences and interesting enough, in regard to the economic consequences that they are projecting here, that they are, they are anticipating, Pope Francis imposed a deadline a month ago, about a month ago. He said it came out. This is August 23rd, 2022, so less than a month ago in the AP. Pope from Rome, Pope Francis on Tuesday, imposed an October 1st deadline for all Holy See offices and Vatican-linked institutions to deposit their assets with the Vatican Bank. It looks like all of their financial assets are going to be coming back to the Vatican. So the transfer, all assets must be transferred by September 30th. So this means that they're going to have to liquidate their positions in stocks and bonds and whatever other commodities they might be invested in. Whoever's managing their money, they're going to have to liquidate it. And then they're going to have to transfer those dollars out to the Vatican Bank if it's in dollars or in euros and transfer it back to the Vatican Bank. And the official currency of the Vatican, one of them, it appears to be the euro. We don't know if they have another currency, but they definitely, the official currency since like 2002 or 2000 of the Vatican is the euro. And right now the euro is at a very low compared to the dollar. So with that being said, obviously, you know, Vatican is telling you the piecemeal World War III is going on right now, and they're transferring all of their assets, they're taking them out of all their assets, investments throughout the whole world, and bringing them back to the Vatican. One plus one equals two. It's not that hard to see what they are anticipating is going to happen. Could this now be the event? Everybody's always chattering about World War III, World War III for the last, you know, since the late 80s or the Cold War, World War III, World War III, now it looks like, well, they're at least uh, making moves financially that could reflect their understanding or maybe they have their insider information regarding what's about to happen. 
So besides the Pope saying that we are in World War III or piecemeal World War III, also the former president of Russia says that we are currently in the prologue of World War III. And a prologue is a pre almost like a preface of a book of World War III. So the beginning stages of World War III. And in, when he said this and brought up World War III, he invoked the book of Revelation and he invoked fire and brimstone which is something I'll show you. But regarding his, his timing of eschatology, he's off uh, a little bit, and I'm gonna clear that, clarify that for everybody. So here is a screenshot of Dmitry Medvedev, the former president of Russia, head of, I think, Russia's like Security Council, on September 13th. Here is his post on Telegram. I highlighted some parts here, I'll bring him through them. He talks about what's going on is in fact a prologue to the Third World War. So we are in it. We are in the Third World War. It started, we've known that it started. It's taking a lot of time to progress. People don't want it to happen, but right now I don't think see anybody doing anything that's gonna stop it from happening. And maybe after this, you know, everybody's gonna take their swords and beat them into plowshares. But first, it looks like these, the, the uh, ICBM nuclear weapons of Zechariah chapter 5 have to, which is the curse that goes over the face of the whole earth, has to fly over the face of the whole earth. And he is talking about NATO's hybrid war with Russia. He's calling it what it is. It's a hybrid war. They're using Ukraine as a proxy to fight Russia. And he talks about how they are carefully weakening Russia by proxy. That is their goal of this war. And according to this current event of the counteroffensive that happened in Kharkiv region just about a week ago, that was successful. And the fallout right now is right now is being experienced in all of Russia, how they're talking heads on uh, on their state television programs and on that they are all they're starting to turn on the on their on their government officials and Putin and the and the chief of the military. So that all is going on. So it's important to note that in response to Ukraine and NATO's successful counteroffensive in the Kharkiv region, Dmitry Medvedev came out talking about how we are in the prologue of the Third World War and that there everyone is going to be very, very bad for everybody. And then he goes on and quotes Revelation chapter 9 in his response to the successful counteroffensive of Ukraine and NATO. And in in later on in his post, he quotes Revelation chapter 9, verse 18. Quote, from these three plagues, from fire, smoke, and brimstone that went out of their mouths, the third part of the people died. So there you see him quoting the book of Revelation. And what Dmitry Medvedev is quoting is from the sixth trumpet right here in Revelation chapter 9. But as I said, his timing and his identification of this next war events is incorrect as because he's talking about events from the sixth trumpet when, when other events have to happen first. And the events that have to happen first are seals number one through six being opened, then seal number seven, and then the trumpet judgments one through five, finally trumpet judgment six, and then other part that's all up for interpretation on the unfolding of the events. But like I said in my video four months ago when Dmitry Medvedev, the same former Russian president, same person, he quoted that the four horsemen of the apocalypse are on the way. He loves the book of Revelation and he was signaling that these horsemen of the book of Revelation were on their way. The seals have yet to be broken so they're not on their way yet, but they're probably ready to go. Four horsemen of the apocalypse that seals number one through four, that has to happen first, then seals uh, five, six, and seven, and then the trumpets. So that is something to consider. So today is the 29th day of the sixth month on the restored calendar of the Dead Sea Scrolls, Qumran, the Prophets, the Torah, Book of J Jubilees, the Book of Enoch, of the Israelites, Yahweh Elohim, solar calendar. And it is correctly calibrated, not using the Gregorian days of the week. And that means that we're only a couple of days until the intercalary day of the season.
followed by the first day of the seventh month, which is Yom Truah, the festival of shout, the festival of shouts. Not the festival of trumpets, but the festival of shouts. Okay, so that is something to consider. So here on September 18th is the intercalary day of the season, and it is the day of fall. So that is something to consider that the following day is, is the day of fall, it appears, which is the first day of the seventh month. It does not go with the equinox, the fall equinox. It's totally different. You need to learn the calendar on how the calendar works, but uh, it doesn't go by the equi e e equinoxes. The seasons are set on the calendar. And that leads me into this verse right here, Jeremiah chapter 8, verse 19 through 20. Quote, Behold, the voice of the cry of the daughter of my people from a land afar off. Quote, Is not Yahweh in Zion? Is not her king in her? That's what they're saying. And they say, and then Yahweh says, Why have they provoked me with their graven images and their with strange vanities? The harvest is past. This is the prophet speaking now. The summer is ended, and we are not saved. They are not delivered. They did not get Yeshua. They did not get the salvation deliverance. So a couple things to note. that This verse can only happen after summertime. And also, we see that the king is anointed. And the king is anointed to sit on the throne on the first day of the seventh month, which is the Feast of Trumpets, the sectarian, civil, re regnal, New Year, which is why they call it Rosh Hashanah, because it is a new year. Now, the first day of the first month is a Rosh Hashanah of the ecclesiastical calendar, starting with month one. We're starting, this calendar is running on month number seven through the end of six. As far as the graven images and the strange vanities, this is speaking of spiritual idolatry, which is making God in their own image of their own mind by replacing Yahweh, his nature, which is his light and easy commandments, with their own ideas of religion and what they want to live by, which is willful lawlessness because they reject his laws and they try to make their own laws. They say, this is not Yahweh's nature, this is his nature, and here they're making, they're replacing Yahweh and making Yahweh into the, their own perverted image of their own mind. And it is the sin of graven images in their own mind, strange vanities, which are unintentional sins of his people, which I will identify in the book of Gad the Seer in this video. So if you're a practicer and you reject keeping the Sabbath day holy, whether it be the Christian Sabbath of Sunday or the Gregorian Jewish Sabbath of Saturday or the Sabbatarian Sabbath of Saturday, or the lunar Sabbath, which is false as well, with those other three Sabbaths. The true Sabbath is a solar heavenly Sabbath, and we are to use the spring equinox to sync up our calendar here on earth with the calendar that's going on in heaven. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth, here on earth as it is in heaven. There's a calendar in heaven, and we are supposed to perform his holy days here on earth as they're being performed in heaven. Hence the song of the Sabbath sacrifice of the Dead Sea Scrolls and everything else. It's his calendar in heaven. We're supposed to keep his holy days and feasts and Sabbaths and new months here on earth. Not new moons, new months. But anyways, that's a longer topic and who knows if how much time is left for you guys to catch up on that. Anyways, Jeremiah chapter 8 verse 19 through 20. Again, here is that graphic. Summer ends here. Summer, fall starts here on the first day of the seventh month, and this is the day that kings are anointed. And Yahweh is in Zion. Are we talking about heavenly Zion? And uh, her king is in Zion. Who knows? Seated on the throne as something to consider. So that now leads me into a video that I did over two years ago now, or about two years ago now exactly, September 19th, 2020, about the Feast of Trumpets, the 10 days of awe, uh, and the Day of Atonement. So I'm going to go ahead and play parts of this video and then I'm going to comment on it. In this video that you're watching, I'm going to go through a couple of items here specifically on the 10 days of awe and tribulation. I'm going to bring us through the Feast of Trumpets or shouting and the blast. Also, I'm going to go through the book of Gad the Seer and locate the place of the rapture and the 10 days of awe 
and how they happen on the first day of the seventh month. So here is the instruction for Yom Teruah, translated as a blowing of trumpets, but it is really a shout. And you would use a shofar to do it. It does not say Yom Shofar, but it's Yom Teruah. And Yahweh spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, in the first day of the month, ye shall have a Sabbath, a memorial of blowing of trumpets, a holy convocation. Ye shall do no servile work therein, but ye shall offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh. So, right here is that you notice that trumpets does not have a strong number associated with it, but rather H8643 does. So I'm going to take a look at that word for H8643, and then it won't say trumpets, because trumpets is shofar. It's Yom Teruah, saying Teruah. Here you see in Strong's H643, Teruah, and it's an alarm, a signal, sound of a tempest, a shout, shout or blast of war, an alarm of war or alarm or joy. You can see Leviticus 23, 24, but right here that word, same word Teruah is used as the trumpet of Jubilee. Then thou shalt cause the trumpet of Jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month. In the day of atonement shall ye make the trumpet sound throughout all your land. So that word 8643 Teruah is not just on the first day of the seventh month, but also on the tenth day of the seventh month on the year of Jubilee, which is the fiftieth year. So there is a sinking going on through this word Teruah. So the 10 days of awe and repentance. I did a video on this about two years ago now, and it's found in the book of Gad the Seer. It's also likely to be the 10 days of tribulation that some are going to have to go through in Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. So here's the book of Gad the Seer, chapter 14, and I'm going to bring you through it. This is an English translation, the only translation I can find, so it is subject to the translator's presuppositions that he wrote into this. So I can't vouch for everything in the text, but it seems pretty good to me, and it's good enough to share with you all, because this is all we have. And it came to pass on the first day of the seventh month at New Year's, in the 478th year of the children of Israel came out of the land of Egypt, in the second year of King Solomon's reign over Israel. This means that the year prior, he was made king on the first day of the seventh month, as you read about in 1 Kings chapter 1. I had a vision from Yahweh when I was upon the Gihon Spring, and that's where Solomon was anointed, and the trumpets were blown, and he was made king. Solomon was made king on the first day of the seventh month over the Gihon Spring, and they blew the trumpets, and they anointed him with oil. The year before, Gad the seer had this vision of this prophecy in the last, book of, in the last chapter of the book of Gad the seer, chapter 14. And I raised my eyes, and lo, the heavens rolled back like a scroll. And I saw the glory of Yahweh sitting on an extremely high throne. Well, that, we're going to see that scroll. In Revelation, we see that scroll roll back. And I saw the glory of Yahweh sitting on an extremely high throne. And here's the appearance of the throne. Twelve stairs led up to the throne, six of gold and six of silver. And there was a square back to the throne like a sapphire stone. And at his right side were three chairs, and at his left side were four chairs near the throne, like the seven that see the king's face, covered with gold and silver and precious stones. Those seven chairs, I understand, are for the seven high angels found in the book of Enoch. And the glory of Yahweh had the appearance like that of the rainbow, his covenant. That's the covenant of Noah, and we are all born into the covenant, and the whole world is in violation of this covenant. And the hosts of heaven were standing before him on his right hand and on his left. And Satan was standing by them, but behind them. Interesting his location. He's behind the host of heaven. And he is the accuser. And then a man dressed in linen brought before the glory of Yahweh three books that contained the records of every man. And he read the first book, and it contained the just deeds of his people. And Yahweh said, 
These are granted eternal life. And Satan said, Who are these guilty people? And the man dressed in linen cried to Satan like a ram's horn, saying, Silence! This day is holy to our master. A cry is the same word as shout, and that Hebrew word is teruah. So a teruah like a ram's horn. And mind you, this vision was on the first day of the seventh month. And he, the man in linen, read the second book, and it contained the unintentional sins of his people. And Yahweh said, Put that book aside, but save it, until one third of the month passes by to see what they will do. A month on, on the prophetic calendar of Enoch solar calendar is always 30 days. So a third of the month is always 10 days. On the day of Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the seventh month, when this prophecy happened, and he said, put aside 10 days to see what's going to happen, to see what the people are going to do. The people that have unintentional sins, these are going to be people professing to be Christians that have unintentional sins that aren't ready for the rapture on the first day of the seventh month. And he read the third book, and it contained the wicked deeds of his people. And Yahweh said to Satan, These are your share. Take them and do what you want with them. And Satan took the wicked to the wasteland to destroy them there. And the man dressed in linen cried like a ram's horn, saying, Blessed are the people who know the joyful shout, O Yahweh, who walk in the light of your countenance. And it is important to note that verse 15 right here is also used or was later used in psalm 89 blessed are the people who know the joyful shout o yahweh who walk in the light of your countenance here i am in psalm 89 and you can see that gad the seer 14 verse 15 is the same as psalm 89 verse 15 blessed is the people that know the joyful sound they shall walk o yahweh in the light of thy countenance and this is a messianic psalm. Psalm, many of the psalms, almost all the psalms, every single psalm, is prophecies about Messiah Yeshua or about Messiah Yeshua's end time servant, who is his lowercase Messiah. So what you need, who is his servant? So what you need to understand is that this is about his servant David. I have found David my servant. I have anointed him with I have with my holy oil have I anointed him here I have made a covenant with my chosen I've sworn unto David my servant so here you have a messianic psalm and it's talking about this this time period on the first day of the seventh month quite possibly and I heard the voice of the host of heaven rejoicing and saying master of justice Yahweh of hosts the whole heaven and earth is full of your glory. And I was shocked by the vision, since I did not know what the Yahweh had done for me. Then one of the cherubs flew up to me, and he put an olive leaf on my mouth and said, Lo, this has touched your mouth, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin forgiven. And this law that you have seen is a statute for Israel, and a law unto the Eloah of Abraham. And peace unto Isaac your father. And Yahweh will bless your people in the trial with everlasting peace. And I said, so be it. May Yahweh our Elohim do this for us and forever. And ever. And the messenger answered, so be it and so be it. So brothers and sisters, there's a lot going on here. Is there going to be a rapture here on the first day of the seventh month? followed by 10 days of repentance to see what if the people are going to repent for their unintentional sins, and then followed at the 10th day of the seventh month. Is that when the escape is going to be, the flight out into the wilderness? I don't have a, understand, a full understanding of it. So we see two shouts of the ram's horn, one on the first day and then one 10 days later, which would be the 10th day of the seventh month, which we know is Yom, to, uh, Yom Kippur, and a shout on Yom Kippur is the Jubilee shout on Yom Kippur. So that is something interesting to consider. Now, also in the book of Gad the Seer, we see another ram's horn shout 
in the first chapter of the book, at the beginning of the book of Gadiseer. In chapter 1, we see a shout, and then we see two shouts in the end. Now, we know that I, we know that we're very close to a Jubilee year, as I shared on my calendar, on my videos, Restoring the Jubilee. It's something to consider. Do I think that this year is the Jubilee year? I do not, because I think that the... Uh, I, because I do think it's under my opinion that the 42 months that Jerusalem is trampled down has to occur prior to, but those 42 months can bleed into or can come into the Jubilee year. The last six months or the last 12 months of that time period can fall into the Jubilee year because it, that year is the year of vengeance. It's the year of recompense. It's the day of vengeance. And a day is also a year, so it's a year of Yahweh's vengeance. It's a year of Yahweh. The day of Yahweh is a year of Yahweh. It's a one-year military campaign, it appears possibly to be, that I'll talk about in my next video. So this is something to consider. So here I am in Gad the Seer chapter 1, and you can see that right here, in verse 18, and the man dressed in linen cried like a ram's horn. So the ram's horn, only the cry like a ram's horn only appears three times in the book of Gad the Seer. See, ram's horn appears three times. It appears in chapter 1 once and then twice in the last chapter. So at the book ends, at the first chapter and the last chapter of the Gad the Seer, we see the man in linen crying like a ram's horn. So th that could be like a pre, and then like an end, t a pre beginning or pre uh, tribulation, forty-two month tribulation event, and then at the end on the seventieth jubilee, and during the year of the seventieth jubilee, that cry is going to go out possibly again. It's hard to exactly know the exact details of these eschatology, considering that it's so it's been hidden. But just like we saw in Gad the Seer, there's two trumpet blasts there. We also see two trumpet blasts in the book of Revelation, at the beginning of the book of Revelation, and also in the book of Joel. In the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 10, and John says he was in the spirit on Yahweh's day, or the day of Yahweh possibly. And he heard behind him a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am the Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And then he's told to write what he sees to the seven churches. And then after he wrote his letter to the seven churches, he says, After this, I looked and beheld, and a door was opened in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was as if it were the trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. So that is very important, this time period. Because as I said, judgment begins in the house of Eloah. The professing Christians are the house of the living Elohim. And what you have among the professing Christians are, they're going to be judged first. And we read about the judgment possibly in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. There looks like there's some things going on. He's like, I found this against you, and I found that against you. Repent right now. So a lot of people out there are going to get 10 days to repent. And during that time of repentance, it looks like it's possibly also... Tribulation, 10 days of tribulation is the beginning of sorrow. A lot of stuff can be going crazy. These people could be missing the first rapture, but they're going to be able to make the escape possibly. But another scenario can be that they totally miss. There isn't a second escape uh, of the women to the wilderness, but rather they have to go to those who uh, buy and sell oil and buy oil from those who buy and sell from their Christian pastures. They have to go back to their Christian slumlord pastors that live off of their tithe while they teach them false doctrines and evilness and don't give them the truth. And they have to go buy and go to them to get the oil. But they don't got the oil, which means that they're going to have to get the oil from the sons of fresh oil from the two witnesses. And they're going to see the two witnesses, which leads into Yom Kippur and the two witnesses. And it's something because the two witnesses are told to prophesy wearing black or, or to sackcloth. And you would put sackcloth on uh, Yom Kippur. So the two witnesses would probably start on Yom Kippur, their ministry, 
And I think that the woman's flight in the wilderness would also start on Yom Kippur. Uh, so on the 10th day or on the day after the 10th day of the seventh month. And I'll be talking about that hopefully up in the coming up video right before about my recalibration of the next Jubilee, the 70th year of Jubilee, and how that uh, it could start in the fall and that the last parts of the trumpets don't happen until during the year of Jubilee, and that which is also when the Israelites entered into the Promised Land in the 10th day of the first month. So that's something for totally another video. So this is enough for right now. I hope that you're blessed. I hope that you uh, counted, you pray that you're counted worthy to escape, stand before the Son of Man. And shalom to my brothers and sisters and Master Yeshua the Messiah, who have his testimony and guard his commandments. Shalom to you. And then you have the beginning of sorrows. For nation shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. This isn't just the sorrows. This is the beginning. But there is an escape. Okay. And some people are not going to be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. But some people are. But for the ones that didn't escape, see the sorrows right here in 1 Thessalonians 4. Some people are going to die during this period. It's just what it is going to be. That's how I understand it. But they'll be resurrected on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, if that atonement is a jubilee. And Paul says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Yeshua died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yeshua will Elohim bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Master, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of our Master shall not prevent them which are asleep. For Yahweh himself shall descend with the heaven, with the shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trump of Eloah. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet our Master in the air, and so shall we ever be with our Master. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. But, so he's coming. This back. last trump is probably during the year of Jubilee, during the Jubilee year, not on Yom Kippur of the Jubilee year, but during the Jubilee year. But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For ye yourselves know perfectly that the day of Yahweh so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, which we've seen, then sudden destruction come upon them at the travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. So that word for travail and sorrow, it's the same, same word. Okay, they're not going to escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of the light and children of the day.